You know, folks, before I ever saw Ayumu Iwasa drive a car, my life was in the gutter, truly. I, uh, I was homeless, sick, no food, no nothing. But then I saw him in F2 in Bahrain, 2022. And immediately, home found, food eaten, sickness healed. Ayumu Iwasa changed my life, yeah? This guy is so good, man. Like, I... You see, I have, an, I have a reputation on Twitter for repping mid. And I put the air quotes over mid because no one I rep is actually mid. But, I still have the, the, the negative connotation with being a guy that reps mid drivers. But when it comes to Iwasa, there's literally no one that can look me in the face and tell me that this guy is mid. Are you Iwasa? I have been singing this guy's praises since... Bahrain last season, even before the, the lights went out for the sprint, I was like, look out for this guy. I believe in him. I don't care if he crashed in quali. I believe in him. He can be great. And look what he's done since then. P5, I think, in F2 last year when it should have been P3. If he didn't have that DQ in Monza, he'd have a super license as we speak. And look at what we look at what he's done so far in F2 this year. Huh? Two wins. One in Jeddah and a feature race win in Australia. Obviously, Porsche is probably the favorite for the championship this year. But I, I, I don't know how anyone can look at Iwasa and not think he's at least a top three driver in F2. A top three driver in F2. This guy is the real deal. Right? And given the situation at Red Bull right now, if De Vries keeps underperforming, if Sonoda falls off a cliff, which I doubt, he's driving the best. He's driving the best he's ever driven in his life, if we're being real. Yeah? There may be some vacancies opening up soon. There may be some vacancies opening up soon. And hopefully, when that time comes, Iwasa will be the one to fill them. Right? He's, all he has to do is get a, like a simple finish in F2 this year will get him the, the super license he needs. Yeah? But that's not the goal. The goal isn't to finish fifth or something. The goal is to win. The goal is to win Formula 2. And I don't know who's going to stop him. Poor Shear? Maybe. Martins keeps crashing out doing stupidity. Yeah? Hauger is good, but he's been unlucky this year. If Iwasa can just stay out of trouble... The championship is his. Poor Shear has made a couple mistakes this year. All right, Bahrain sprint, he ate up his tires. He he murdered Bearman in Jeddah. He hasn't been squeaky clean. Yeah, I think Iwasa is the best driver in F2, and I think Iwasa, we might see him on the grid next season. Now here's the problem. As I'm recording this, Liam Lawson has just won on his Super Formula debut. That guy continues to impress me no matter where he goes and what he does. He's generational. And Red Bull are now in a situation where they almost have too many good drivers. And by too many, I mean two. The two standouts, Lawson and Iwasa. Yeah? De Vries, De Vries is looking like a placeholder right now, bro. De Vries is looking like a placeholder right now. Right? And who knows? If Colton Herta cooks in IndyCar this year, wins the championship, gets a super license, who's to say he won't be in the running? Who's to say he won't get a testing role? But the problem with Colton is that by the time he's to win the IndyCar championship, Red Bull would have probably made their decision. So that's not even into it. But Iwasa, man, let's get back to him. He is the future. The future. He might actually be the future of Red Bull, man. Because don't get me wrong, Sonoda had a brilliant F2 debut season, right? Brilliant. Got top three in the championship, got the super license, got call up immediately. But we're only just now seeing the best of Sonoda. Yeah? Only now. So it takes time. Yeah, we saw flashes of brilliance in 2021. Even more flashes of brilliance in 2022. But right now, these first three races of the year in this garbage car, this is the best of Sonoda. And we're only seeing it now in 2023. So who's to say the same can't happen for Iwasa? Yeah? He's already done a year of F2. 
a season where he should have finished top three in the championship. And he's getting the second season of F2 that people think Sonoda should have gotten. So what's the what happens if he wins it this year? Surely he gets called up. Can't. What you gonna do with him if you don't call him up? You gonna send him to Super Formula? Maybe, maybe for a year to to give him something to do. Lawson is Lawson is a reserve right now, and he's in Super Formula. If they call him up, maybe you put Iwasa in 2024 to the same thing. You make him do Super Formula and you have him as a reserve for Alpha Tauri. But you, Red Bull cannot waste Iwasa, man. He is generational talent. Absolutely generational. They're two for two when it comes to Japanese. Well, technically two for three. Ren Sato didn't really do anything in Super Formula last year, but you get me. You get what I'm saying. Iwasa is him, man. Iwasa is him. When you even look back in Bahrain, where he was holding people off with dead tires. You look at Jeddah, lap one and two, where he went from fourth to P1 in the blink of an eye. You look at the pole in Australia. The race pace he showed from, the, from pole in Australia to win that race, even with a late safety car and Porsche right behind him. He dominated. Iwasa is that guy, man. Invest in Iwasa stocks right now. I'm, I'm warning y'all for the last time. Time is running out. By the time you realize he's world class, it won't even be cool anymore. It won't even be cool to say Iwasa is a goat anymore. Because everyone would have already known it. I'm warning y'all. Iwasa is a threat to some of these youngins on the grid. Iwasa is a threat and in my opinion, the favorite for the F2 title. And when he wins it, don't be surprised. Do not be surprised if Iwasa wins the championship this year. Do not be surprised if you see Iwasa in the young driver's test in Abu Dhabi this year. Do not be surprised if you see Ayumu Iwasa on the F1 grid in 2024. I'm telling you it might happen. I am telling you it might happen. I need to take a sip of water. I'm very passionate about this guy. Mmm. Iwasa is that guy, man. Iwasa is that guy. I don't know how many more times I can say it. Look at what he did to Drugovic in Abu Dhabi last year. Look at how he won France last year. Look how he went from last to points on his F2 debut last year in Bahrain. And almost did the same thing in the feature race before he had a car problem at the end. I knew this guy was world class from day one. From day one. I knew Iwasa was world class. And now the world is starting to see what I have been saying for the past year. But this is this is not a shock to me. Iwasa leading the championship is not a shock to me. And as far as I'm concerned, only three people realistically stand between him and the championship. And that is Theo Porcher, Victor Martens. And the only reason I put those two in there is because of ART tax. The ART is a rocket ship this year. I don't know what kind of engineers they have in the in the paddock, but they're setting up the car very well. ART have so much speed. So them two and Hauger. Dennis Hauger would be third in the championship right now if he didn't have bad luck. But it's F2, so everyone's going to have bad luck. Even Iwasa will have bad luck this year. But it's how he copes with it that will determine whether or not he will win the championship. And I think he will. So that's all I have to say for this unscripted. Watch out. Watch out. For Ayumu Iwasa. Goodbye.